Do I have time for another cup of coffee? I'm trying to get the chat working, so. Okay. And we're live. Look <laughs> yeah, look at that. There's why the is, chat. Why is it so small, though? I have to fix you, that. Who, why is who so small? Me? Uh, the, um, the lettering is very, very small. And uh, since we're old and we can't read, we need to make that bigger. Hold on a second. Which I can fix. <laughs> it's perfect now. There we go. Oh, look at that. Right. Isn't that better? Isn't that better? I wish I could do that with some of my mod screens. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, welcome. This is the first uh, episode of the Smoker Show. Usually on Tuesday nights, you hear me on Smoke Free Radio, but once a month, maybe a little bit more often, me and uh, my good buddy Phil Bassardo will be doing uh, something new. We're trying something new, right, Phil? What is the Absolutely. Smoker Show? Uh, the Smoker Show is something that we've been talking about doing for a long time, and, and finally it's here, it's happening. Uh, this show is really designed for probably nobody who is watching right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, right? I mean, most likely we're going to have a lot of vapors that are going to catch the show, but that's okay because, right. hey, you might learn something, uh, right. especially if you're trying to recommend to star kids. Um, we're going to try to mix a little bit of science along with trying to dumb it down a little bit for smokers. But uh, more so, what we want is for you to send your smokers here because you know i mean smokers have a lot of questions and i know sometimes especially experienced vapors you know you get a little bit annoyed it's question after question after question that's what we're here for eventually we want to turn this into a platform where we're going to be able to give away starter kits get people involved we can get feedback we want smokers to get some kits and then call us back after a week let us know how it went for them what kind of issues they might have encountered and just collect all that feedback and try to make um better and better um not only products but the way that we actually promote them uh right. the spreaker is not working today i will record this audio and upload it separately so uh and i apologize for that because uh just it's just too much stuff going on it's just too it's just too much well see what happened was uh dimitri got hit by the uh, the microsoft update uh yeah, did. And it's taking you. It's taken how long so far? It's taken forever. Right, forever, which is a, which is a very very long time. But um, I think the show is really important because I think what happens is, with all of us in the community, we forget we forget that right now somebody in this world is picking up an electronic cigarette for the very very first time, right? But we always talk to other vapors, so we we use tech, we use jargon, we use acronyms that we're all familiar with, but somebody coming in, coming into the vaping scene right now is going to be w extremely overwhelmed with, with everything, everything that they see, everything that they hear, everything that they try, uh, all the different styles, all of the acronyms, all of the terms. So that's really the, the, the goal of this show is to really talk to smokers, get more smokers involved, get more people to transition off of traditional tobacco cigarettes and get more people involved in vaping. Right. Phil, do you think that it's easier? Do you think that it's easier in 2018 to use vaping to quit smoking than it was in 20 uh, in, in 2009 when you started or 2010 when I started? I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to say that that depends. Right. That depends on what that device is, that first device that they pick up, because if they pick up a, a, a replaceable pod device, uh, it's going to be very, very easy if they pay, pick up uh, something with all of the bells and whistles and screens and, and, and options and features and functions that you've got on, on today's uh, modern devices. Uh, it's going to be much, much more difficult. I think I think. Yeah, I think that we do have a wider uh, array of options. One thing that's really been bugging me is the mix between some of these closed pod systems in open systems and vape shops. I think that there's a right place. I think I think there's a right place for every product. But I think that the more we cross over, I believe in open vapor systems. Uh, personally, I think that that's what people really need to quit smoking. I think that the closed pod system is great to introduce somebody or somebody that's, you know, just at an age that they don't want to deal with. They just want something to plug it in. It gets expensive after a while. And I think that deters a lot of people from continuing to use pods. So that kind of crosshairs of, of bringing a lot of pods in a vape shop, I'm not a big fan of it. I'll be honest with you. 
Right. Right. But, you know, there I mean, you know, counterpoint, uh, they're, they're a very easy method for somebody to get involved with vaping yeah. or somebody to, to just transition off of smoking and get something that's satisfying, super, super easy to use. But, you know, but like, you know, to your point, it becomes uh, an issue of price and availability, too. Let me see. Right? If you, let me see if you can hear this real quick. OK. Oh, did you did you update? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm up. I'm up and running. Okay. Everything is going. I just want to make sure that the phone lines are working. OK, and now uh, and we'll we've already work. started. To, we've already started talking about things like pod mods and um, closed systems and open systems. Yeah. And we're going to go through a lot of that in this uh, in the show. Yes, we're going to go through some of the terminology and we're going to go try to try to use like a little slide action, trying to go one by one, step by step and let everybody know what is. Can you hear that? You can't hear that, right? I cannot hear that. Yeah, I cannot hear it either, to be honest with you. <laughs> so yeah i i had i had a bunch of people really excited about the show and, and my response to several people was yeah come and watch the uh, the train wreck tonight because i mean this is our yeah, first time yeah. this and you know we fully expected there to be technical issues but we're gonna dial it in don't you guys worry about it uh i i can't see well let me see i mean this is this is just my my this is the life story of, of my my i need to hire uh, uh by the way good evening to everybody uh, that we're seeing on youtube we certainly appreciate you guys hanging around um uh, but i can't get the audio to come in for some reason all right let me just end that and select something else uh wh what are you vaping feel right now well i uh, uh, devices or liquids uh, oh, i am yeah. using let's see i got a bunch of stuff here uh because Inigan is one of our main sponsors for the other uh, show i am using the christmas version look at that isn't that cute the christmas version of the t20s i've got a uh, a chroma a here with a um a zenith tank on it i've got the uh, the gooby the new Inigan gooby all right mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, yeah, I know. I know it is probably pronounced uh, Gobi, but uh, I think Gooby is a lot more fun to say. It is. All right. And then uh, I have what I'm reviewing next, which is the uh, the Sense uh, V-Jet. Okay. Uh, well, I appear not to be able to get this to work for some reason. It's and, it's quite all right. And uh, so uh, we will work it out soon. I, I apologize for the telephones. That line's being me up. But let's go ahead. Uh, somebody says turn up my mic. I can do that. Yeah, well, I was turned that way, okay? So now that I'm directly into the mic, it should be working uh, correct. But everybody, uh, good evening. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start and bring this up here, uh, um, if you don't mind, Phil. Let me just go on these, this first slide. Okay. And I think I have that done here. Look at that. Look at that. That worked for crying out loud. It worked. That, that was really good. Really good, Demi. Uh, this is just obviously our, our beginning uh, slide, giving you the contact information. If you're watching this in a, in, in a replay, you can see some of the links down there where you can get in contact with us. If you have some issues or if you have problems with your vape, we're always willing to help. And trust me, Phil answers every email. Uh, well, I mean... Almost every email. He the, yeah. the the porn spam sites. He tries to just hide them. The, but the, anyway. <laughs> erect, the erectile the erectile dysfunction <laughs> emails. I don't read those. No. So of course we want to thank Inakin, which is our first sponsor. Right. We're hoping to have now, some more sponsors in the in the in the future. Uh huh. Now before we go any further, uh, I just want to say that you know Dimitri and I put these uh, slides together. Uh, these slides are going to be a work in process. It's going to be what we call uh, a, a living document. Okay. Uh, so as we do this show, we are going to be making some changes to the uh, to the slides, and um, we're going to make them available to you guys too somewhere at some point. Well, we're going to okay. have them probably up on tasteyourjuice.com. I sure. think that that would be the best spot to have them on there, where you guys, the vapors, can share them with other uh, potential vapors and smokers. Right. And I think it's very very important, especially to dumb it down. I, I really right. think that one of the biggest issues that I've seen with trying to convert people is Vapors have evolved in the next the last seven, eight years, right? So I think we've come to the point where a lot of vapors are like, I'm not going to say they're looking down at somebody using a small or a new device, but, you know, they're used to the two, three battery mods. They're used to their smoke tanks and all that. That I think that they make the smokers sometimes feel like they're inadequate. And I think that's, yeah, a, that's is, a big problem, right? Which is, is absolutely not a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to uh, to several people who actually won't go to shows because they're they're afraid of what other people are going to say or they're embarrassed of their equipment. And, you know, I, I always say, well, you go to the show and you walk alongside of me. And if any, anybody says anything, you know, they'll have to say it to me, too. 
uh, because this is not about the device that you're using. It's not about the wattage that you have. It's not about, um, you know, how many coils you have in your atomizer. This is about not smoking. OK, yeah. this is about leading a healthier lifestyle. And, and that's what we're trying to achieve here. I'm a little bit upset that you don't have a single picture of me by myself on that rotating screen that's behind it. Please make sure that's been taken care of for the next uh, for the next episode. There is a picture of you on the rotating screen. You did not see it yet, I guess, right? It's it's well, not, it's not me by myself, is it? No, it's not you. It's oh, okay. it's, it's 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 both of us. Uh, no, no, please. I want one. But by I myself. promise, I, I will fix myself. it. I will I fix it myself. for the next show. Okay. All right, let's get in here. This is the <laughs> okay. most important question, Phil. Have at it. What is vaping? What is vaping? Uh, we are calling these EVPs. We're calling them e-liquid vaping products. By the way, I want to thank Bill Tarling for coming up yes. with that term. That is an excellent term. And from t today, well, actually from the last week's Tuesday night Smoke Free Radio, I have making a habit from now on to call what we're doing, the, what we're using, EVPs, e-liquid right. vaping product. And that separates us from all the other products that are on the market. Right, because there are. Uh, when we talk about vaping, right, vaping can be a, a lot of different things that a lot of people are uh, uh, doing, you know, uh, outside of vaping sure. e liquids, right? Sure. Okay, so that's why we're calling them EVPs, e liquid vaping products, okay? By, by the way, and, we don't have nothing against that. I just want to put that up there. No, absolutely not. I'm, I'm, I'm not down <laughs> on the butt at all. Um, an e liquid, uh, in the case of this, of this, uh, this show here, may or may not contain nicotine, okay? So I think I feel, yes. When, when when people tell you, oh, what you're doing is 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 uh, uh, you know just as bad as smoking. What you're doing is, uh, that that looks crazy. That looks strange. That looks weird. What is right. your response to that? Uh, my response is uh, do some research. Okay, yeah, do some exactly. research and stop listening to. Uh, what big media may be telling you. And that's another purpose of this show is to talk about some of the myths and, and talk about some of the bad press that vaping is getting and, and try to set some people uh, either straight or at ease um, for, for trying this, trying what we're doing. Have you, uh, have you, uh, as a vapor, please start using this term. Please start using this term EVPs. I think this is going to benefit us a lot in the future. Moving ahead, especially with the IQOS coming. All right, vaping. Is it safe? Is it right? Uh, uh, we have to go yeah. back to the slides. Isn't this where you go back to the slides? Oh, yeah, right yeah. Now? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. There we go. Okay. Oh, I can't hear the audio. Okay, go ahead. It's okay. Um, so, is vaping safe? It's perfectly safe, right? Wrong. Okay. Anybody who tells you that should not be telling you that. All right. Now, it's going to be generations of vapors before we truly know the harm reduction level, but there have been a lot of really, really good studies done, and all of the studies are pointing to the fact that vaping is a much safer way of getting your nicotine than through a traditional combustible tobacco cigarette. Yeah. Well, I think, I think uh, Phil, if you look back at, uh, you know, a, a lot of the beginning in 2009, 2010, we had a lot of companies saying it's just water vapor, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was, it was a different time when this product was introduced. And as science has evolved, there is no doubt in my mind that this product is at least 95% safer. I mean, that is what the College of Physicians came to their conclusion after their peer-reviewed study. And it's, gonna, it's actually even more safer than that, but we just can't exactly tell because... I mean, we've only been vaping for 10 years, Max. I mean, I, 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 I know people that have been vaping for 10 years, since 2007, right? Um, so, you, I mean, you want to call that long-term, you want to call it short-term, you want to call it intermediate, we're not going to know 10, 20 years from now. But if we just take this 95%, right, this 95%, right. Right. and I'm using this number very, very loosely because I, I, I mean, I, I, there's no way that you can put an exact number, depending on no, how many and, and we should smoke, talk. Right? We should just really quick mention where the 95% number comes from. Yeah, yeah, okay. and this, this comes from the, college, uh, uh, the Royal College of Physicians in the UK, where they did a peer review study on about 220 studies on electronic cigarettes, and that's what they determined. They actually put it on a scale that the vaping is, 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 is as bad as harmless as the available NRT products, which is the gums and the patches that the government right now um, allows you to. And right. we'll work some of these slides into it. We actually, actually have all the graphs for you to show you. But in any case, that is where it comes from. So a cigarette, you know, a cigarette does not kill you immediately. I mean, it does not. You just don't smoke a cigarette and drop dead the next day. It takes 20, 30, sometimes 40 years for, uh, for the tobacco-related illnesses to actually 
um, cause you death. I mean, you might be suffering right. <laughs> from COPD and other stuff that, that you might develop, but to actually kill you, it takes a very, very long time. So if it takes 20, 30 years for an average of a cigarette to kill you, 95% less harmful means it would take you 180 years to kill you, which obviously you're going to die from something else before you're going to die from vaping. Continue, Phil. Where were we? Uh, Are we going to go back let, to the let slide? Me, let me pull the slide. Yeah, you have to remind me to do that. Go back to the that. slide. You have to remind me to do that. No, that's okay. I'll remind you. Yeah. So, you know, if we look at, uh, and by the way, if anybody uh, quotes a study and says, well, vaping has this and vaping is that and vaping is this, always ask them this question. Well, how does it compare to a cigarette? Because that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're not talking about harm elimination. We're talking about harm reduction when it comes to vaping, right? Mm -hmm. So if we look at the scale, I call smoking bad. Right. And if we can reduce the amount of cigarettes through vaping, that's good. If we can eliminate cigarettes completely through vaping, that's better. But let's not kid ourselves. If you don't smoke and you don't vape, that is best. OK, so here's a show about vaping. And I'm telling you not to vape if you also don't smoke. OK, so the, the people we're trying to reach with this show are smokers, not the person who's like thinking about like, they don't do anything. And they just want to vape because they, they think it looks cool or it's fun. That's not the kind of people that we want to attract. We want to attract smokers. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the goal of the show. And, and you know, it's interesting, Phil, because um, I, yeah, I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. I mean, uh, we were not born with a PV in our mouths. We definitely were not born with a cigarette in our mouths. Okay. Right. Uh, so uh, when, when, when I see initiation of the, of, of the product, it kind of bothers me, but... If they're going to start something, I'd rather they start vaping than they start smoking. There's no doubt about it. Of course. Of but, course. but the best thing to do is not to do anything. That's right. We're not born with to, to intake in our lungs smoke or vapor or anything else. Or even some of the, the air pollution that's out there right now. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. So moving along. How does it work, Phil? All right. So we've got uh, four main components, right? And those four main components are going to be a power source. That power source is going to um, send power to a heating element. That heating element is going to get hot. And uh, the, the, the e-liquid is directed to that heating element through some kind of a wick, right? And that wick used to be silica. Now, typically, it's going to be some kind of a Japanese organic cotton. There are definitely more wicking materials out there. But in general, that's pretty much how all of the vaporizers work today, today. Now there's some new technology coming. Uh, hopefully we will see some of that stuff soon, but right now you got a power source, you've got a heating element, you've got wicking and you have e-liquid. You know, I, I, I was invited to uh, a UK show uh, the other day with Sir Vaping a lot. And we, and we, we kind of touched on this, uh, you know, if you look at vaping today mm -hmm. versus 2009, it's virtually the same thing. I mean, let's it not kid ourselves. We have a power supply, which at the time was a you know a 901 or a 808 battery, right? 510, right. right. Yeah. We had the heating element, which was inside a cardamizer, right? Yep. Which was usually 3 ohm and above. We right. had the wicking, which actually the filling, filling material that was around that coil inside that cardamizer. And the liquid that was suspended in that cardamizer, because usually we'd, we'd buy them pre-filled at the time. Right. So if you think about it from... You know, the, the sense of how does it work? Not much has changed. <laughs> right. Really, if you, Right. If you think of it in, in its simplest terms, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. A lot of features, more coils, more power, different kinds of coils, different viscosities of liquid. Um, so like a lot of that stuff has evolved. But really, the, 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 the general idea of what it is that we're doing, we're heating e-liquid to the boiling point with some kind of a heating element and we're taking in the vapor. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, and and listen, evolution and innovation, and it's great. It's, it's really fantastic, the better that we can do it. But at the end of the day, it's still the same thing. It really is. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, th this, is, this, is a, this, this is a really touchy, touchy one for me. Uh, and I don't know if you're going to be able to read that, or I can put it on the big one. Let me put it on the big one. It might be a little bit easier. Sure. Uh, especially maybe, maybe for older people. Maybe we can both uh, speak to this one a little bit. Sure, so, sure. you know, there's there's a lot of vaping myths out there, right? Uh, and, and some people, they hear these myths through, uh, through you know, big media or the news, and, and they hear them and they, they think, well, that's it. You know, vaping is bad. Uh, and there's a lot more myths, but I, I found or I picked, I chose four of them. 
right, to talk about. So let's talk about the first one. Uh, vaping is just as or more harmful than smoking, okay? And, well, you know, a lot, most of the studies that we're seeing, including the one from the Royal College of Physicians, estimate vaping to be 95% safer than traditional combat combustible tobacco cigarettes. Okay. So no, b based on everything that we've seen, vaping is, is much safer than smoking a cigarette. Yeah. This is, this is one that really bugs me, especially when, when, when people follow mainstream news media, which likes to have all these flashy stories that e-cigs are just as bad as cigarettes, blah, 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 because they're, they're, they're catchy stories and they're going to get clicks. And people don't do their own research. I mean, how many times have you been out on public and people have told you that, oh, what you're doing is just as bad, if not worse, than smoking? It's very hard to sit down one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, especially when you're in public, and explain to them, listen, we have over 400 now peer-reviewed studies on electronic cigarettes that prove that it's not as harmful as smoking. And that's all you really need to know. It's just not as harmful as smoking. You right. don't have to go into the detail of it. But this one, this one is really, really bugging me. And I think that the best way to approach this is just by simply responding. Google Roy College of Physicians study on electronic cigarettes. There you go. And just leave it at that. And I think that's the easiest way even for shop owners, even for, for vapors that are talking to smokers or, or smokers that don't believe about the product or just in general the public. Because if we educate the public on what vaping is, we'll have a better time trying to keep it around. Yeah, absolutely. And also on, uh, on tasterjuice.com, there's a section there called, is it safe? And uh, basically every article that I've run into uh, that kind of proves that vaping is safer than smoking, uh, I try to put in that section there for you guys to check out. All right. This vapor contains formaldehyde. Well, no. Eh. Okay. So that was based on an invalid study where unrealistic testing conditions produced meaningless results. Now, you may have heard this uh, be referred to as the, the dry puff, mm -hmm. the dry puff um, uh, phenomenon, okay? Yeah. So what happened was um, they tested in an unrealistic way. So they tested to the point where the wick was burnt, there was no more e-liquid, and they got formaldehyde. Right. Well, any of us as vapors are not going to vape to the point where... That's what we get, okay, because we're going to naturally be able to tell that we have no vapor, we have no e-liquid, uh, something is wrong, I have this horrible burnt taste in my mouth, so I'm going to stop doing it, right? So we will prevent ourselves anything like that from happening. But, you know, it is important to know that you do need to keep your wick properly saturated, and if you do taste any kind of a, a burnt taste or an off-putting taste, time to stop and figure out where your issue is, right? Uh, formaldehyde exists everywhere, by the way. I just want to be, it's in your breath naturally, right? Especially a little bit higher on Phil's breath. Uh, but um, everybody emits formaldehyde when they're speaking. But here's the thing, or when you're breathing, I should say. There are levels that are acceptable, okay? And all the formaldehyde that has been found on electronic cigarettes is way below the acceptable levels of what the governments have allow, allotted to be. Right? right. So if, if the formaldehyde that an electronic cigarette puts out is just as harmful as your breath, that means it's harmless completely. So I think that the exaggerated numbers that we've seen and some of the numbers that they're throwing out there always have to be compared to a traditional tobacco cigarette. Right. right. So a tobacco cigarette has 6,000 times more formaldehyde than an electronic cigarette. And that's been proven. Okay. Right. Uh, E-liquid contains antifreeze. Go, go back to the slide. Go yeah, back yeah, to the yeah, slide. Yeah, absolutely. Good. I tell you what, you speak to this one because I'm going to refill my coffee. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Well, this information was based on a 2009 study. This study, by the way, has been quoted. It was just quoted today in an article. I mean, a study from nine years ago, and they're still using the study, uh, with, uh, with equipment that is by now outdated. Nobody uses this equipment anymore. Uh, but in this study, 18 e-liquid cartridges were tested, and one contained dithyl a chemical used in industrial antifreeze that is toxic to humans. The level found was nearly untraceable at around 1%. This should not be a concern with modern e-liquid manufacturing practices from reputable companies. E-liquids do contain PG, which is propylene glycol, which is sometimes used in antifreeze as an additive to make it less dangerous if swallowed. The Food and Drug Administration has classified PG as an additive that is generally recognized as safe for human consumption. And again, this study, this FDA study, where they took these cartomizers, and again, we don't know exactly how they were used and how they were used in a laboratory setting, because especially at the time in 2009, they were using smoking machines. And now we all know that the draw on an electronic cigarette is very different than the draw of a cigarette, right? 
And of course, now as we have evolved, nobody uses these cartridges anymore. And the ones that are actually using these cartridges have evolved into clearomizers and to wicking material that's a lot better than it was at the time. So um, this antifreeze is completely debunked at this point. And, uh, and it's, it's a bit annoying to see that even in today, a study, this study is being used. Just today, Phil, a study was, was quoted quoting this 2009 study. Unreal. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's really it's really uh, it's really uh, it's really annoying. Let me get caught up a little bit on the on the chat here. Total crap. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, water is an antifreeze. Ban water. Absolutely, Mowgli. That's that's a good point. Um, and you're going to burn any form of matter is going to emit chemicals. Yes, and and that is the combustion factor that we are eliminating through vaping. Okay, that is exactly what we're we're eliminating. All right. So moving on to the next slide, uh, Mr. Phil. Sure. Nicotine is bad for you. Well, uh, maybe not. Uh, you know, the, uh, the I think the jury is kind of out on this one. First of all, uh, well, you know, vaping still has nicotine, so it's carcin. You know, you, it's you're going to get cancer, right? Right, right? Well, that's not true because nicotine is not carcinogenic, right? And it's never been linked to cancer. Yeah. Um, now, outside of that, there's a, there's a couple debates. Uh, is nicotine good or bad? Well, the good is. Uh, nicotine consumption may increase the speed of sensory information processing, relieve stress, anxiety, and panic attacks, and more. In Dimitri, it works for his erectile dis dysfunction, sometimes, right? Sometimes, sometimes. So yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, the bad, the bad is, well, nicotine is still a stimulant, right? Just like coffee. So, you know, if you've got some heart issues, you may want to stick, a, a stick a, or stay away from uh, nicotine. Mm -hmm. But uh, nicotine can kickstart your adrenal glands and give you a bit of adrenaline, right? That's mm -hmm. that nicotine rush and the buzz that you yeah. get. Um, you know, from high nicotine products, uh, nicotine can cause short term increase in heart rate and blood pressure, but only temporarily as with your coffee. Right. And here I am drinking my coffee yeah. and it is not decaffeinated, by the way. I think, uh, by the way, we're going to take questions at the end of the uh, at the end of the show, uh, uh, towards the end of these slides. OK, so just, just mm -hmm. let everybody know. Uh, but uh, you know, the, 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 you're you're still a nicotine addict. I keep hearing that over and over. And over. Personally, I depend on nicotine. I like nicotine just like I like my caffeine. Right? It's something that I use to to focus. It's something that I'm used to. I am not a. I don't think the addiction. It's more of a dependency. And and I think there's there should be a a distinction there because we don't see people robbing you know pharmacies to to get <laughs> nicotine and inject it. You know, I mean we 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 haven't gotten to that point. But what we're seeing here. Uh, is that even if you do have a heart issue where nicotine or, you know, blood pressure issue that nicotine um, might not be the best for you, the great thing about vaping is that you can vape without nicotine. So you can mimic the physiological aspect of smoking, right, without yep. taking in the nicotine that could potentially be harmful for you. Right. Right. It's a safer way to get your nicotine. And, you know, if you're going to demonize uh, nicotine and people who, who need nicotine, well, then you might as well demonize uh, everybody who has to have their Starbucks or their Dunkin Donuts uh, coffee in the morning. Right. Because it's pretty much the same thing. There are a lot of people who cannot get started in the morning without their morning cup of coffee. Yeah. Very similar, guys. I've also I've also heard that nicotine can help in, 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 a, in a couple of diseases as well, too. So, I mean, listen. Uh, the, the bottom line is, is that nicotine, unfortunately, especially in the U.S. and globally, has been gotten a bad rap. When you see uh, smoke coming out of somebody's mouth, if they're smoking a cigarette, immediately your brain thinks nicotine, cancer. And they've related those two. And unfortunately, the FDA and all the public health groups have continued to mislead the people that nicotine is the culprit here. Where nicotine is not the culprit here it is the combustion that kills inside cigarettes. So yeah, right. moving along. And uh, I'm going to yeah. take some notes here as we go. If I look at the chat here, like Mark Thompson is asking about secondhand vapor. Sure. Uh, there are some really good studies on secondhand vapor, and we'll attack that on the uh, the next show. How about yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is a question that we get all the time, and I'm sure you guys out there, you vapors, get all the time. Uh, you know what's in your liquid? Right. Four main ingredients, maybe three if you uh, vape zero nick. Uh, you've got propylene glycol, PG. Uh, it's a colorless, odorless liquid. It's used in the food industry as a flavor carrier, uh, as an ingredient in uh, food coloring. 
as an additive in various medicines and the active ingredient, believe it or not, in asthma inhalers and nebulizers. Propylene glycol is a non-toxic and generally recognized as safe for human consumption by the FDA in moderate quantities. Now, what does what is a moderate quantity? Um, well, that's a really good question. And, uh, you know, that's something that we should all think about um, as we're using these products. And it hasn't been defined, by the way. I mean, so. No. <laughs> so uh, all right. Continue, Phil. All right. So the other uh, the other one is uh, a VG. Now, of course. Um, when, when I started this, it was always PG first, then VG. I'm going to, I'm going to continue that, mm -hmm. but you know, and now as, uh, e-liquids have more and more, uh, VG to make uh, bigger and bigger clouds, it's kind of reversed, but in, in my opinion, it is still PG VG, right? So VG is a colorless odorless liquid derived from plant oils. Although it's processed from oils, it isn't an oil, but rather an alcohol, which makes it safe to inhale. It's used in the food industry as a sweetener and to keep foods moist. Medicines also contain VG. Vegetable glycerin is a non-toxic and generally recognized as safe for human consumption by the FDA in moderate quantities. Mm -hmm. And and both of these are carriers. I need people to understand, especially, yep. and we're going to talk about this in a little bit once we start getting into kits and what to match up, what's a good liquid to match up with any. But both of these are just carriers of the flavoring and the nicotine. So depending on which way you're going to go, if you're going to have a higher PG, you're going to get more flavor, more harsh of a vape, um, if you're going to use more VG, you're going to need more heat to get that flavor out. You're going to get a smoother vape and you are most likely going to get, um, more vapor, obviously, because it is a thicker carrier for the, for the next two ingredients that we have in. Right. So obviously we do have flavorings. So, uh, the e-liquids are flavored with food grade flavorings. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the important thing to keep in mind that all of these flavorings are basically designed for consumption you eat them okay ingestion, mm -hmm. ingestion right so th there have been some studies done uh by some companies on uh flavorings for inhalation um but for the most part these are food flavorings that we're using okay and then obviously the nicotine and the nicotine concentration can be controlled based on what you buy yeah and, and this, there's also some other additives that we're seeing, especially lately in liquids. I mean, there's a sucralose, there's a sweetener that, that's being used. Uh, we see ethyl maltol being used for, as a sweetener, which is basically a cotton candy flavor that, that sweetens up liquid as well, too. We're seeing a little bit of that being added into our liquid. Now, should you be concerned about that? Um, we don't know. I mean, really, we don't know. We, there's just no studies that are out there. I guarantee you, again, that it's going to be, no matter how much sweetener you're going to have in your liquid, it's still going to be safer than smoking. The only thing that's going to suffer really hard is your coils, because these sweeteners like to attack coils, and you'll see that your coils might not last as long as you expected them to. Whether you're rebuilding or whether you're using stock coils, you're going to have an issue with sweeteners attacking them and, and turning them black pretty fast. Right, and there have also been some studies uh, done that measure the, um, we'll call it the harm level of vaping as your temperature increases. And maybe that's something that we can attack in a, a future show as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think it's very, very important to, to ask the manufacturers. If, don't be afraid to ask them. Uh, don't be afraid to ask them if they have any additives, if you feel that something is wrong. If, you, if you, you are the consumer, you have every right. Don't believe the hype. Just get out there and ask questions from the people that manufacture your products. Right, Phil? Agreed. Ask questions. Okay. So this is a little bit, I touched on it, but I'll let you expand on the types of liquid. Okay. So um, we got all kinds of liquids out there. We got higher PG, we got higher VG, and now we have salt nicotine e-liquids. So if your liquid is a higher PG, generally what happens? Generally, it's going to produce less vapor. Uh, it's generally going to be thinner and easier to wick. Uh, it may be considered more harsh and provide more of a throat hit. Uh, the nicotine concentration can also obviously affect the amount of throat hit. Uh, with higher VG, you could also get uh, better flavor carrying because PG is known as a flavor carrier, right? Right. Higher VG, higher VG is going to uh, produce more vapor. It's going to be generally a thicker. That should be thicker. That should be th I, that should say thicker right there. Generally, a thicker uh, liquid and more difficult to wick. Um, and it may also smooth out the um, uh, the amount of throat hit and and the harshness of uh, your vape. Uh, if you are vaping a higher VG, right? And of course, the nicotine concentration is also going to uh, control or adjust the amount of throat hit that you're getting. And now we have uh, salt nicotine e-liquid. So this is uh, something new. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And it's it's a newer type of e-liquid that utilizes uh, nicotine salts as opposed to the more standard free based nicotine uh, that was in uh, most of the e-liquids uh, to a certain point. Uh, the process used to create the nicotine salt uh, creates a nicotine that is smoother with less throat hit and faster and a faster absorption rate. Right. So this is really, really good for those people and maybe even those transitioning people who need a higher nicotine but they, you know, to be successful with vaping, but they also need something smooth and not harsh. Okay. So when I started vaping, I was able to do it with an 18 uh, milligram free base Mm -hmm. on like really, really lousy products. Right. Yeah. But I was still able to make the, uh, the the transition. But it's good now that we have yet another tool to allow people to quit smoke. I tell you what, uh, with uh, you I, what. I, I I did a little experiment uh, with with salt nicotine. I got a few brands because somebody was telling me that there's different types of salt nicotine and different ways of people that are extracting these tobacco alkaloids and how it's actually you know, the whole process, right? Like the Juul uses a different type of salt nicotine and some of the refillables and so forth and so forth. And it's true. It is true. I found some salt nicotines that are harsher. I found some salt nicotines that don't have a throat hit at all. I found some salt nicotine that does have a throat hit at 20 milligrams uh, nonetheless. So what I did is I did a little experiment. I took a replaceable coil uh, mouth-to-lung atomizer, right, the Zenith, and mm-hmm. I put I put a 20 milligram salt nicotine. I used this Silk Nic uh, from, from Canada. This is an icebreaker. It's a m- m- menthol. You know how I like it. I know how you like your menthols. Right. Yep, yep. And and I filled up the tank. I was actually getting a good throat hit. It was actually pleasurable to vape. It wasn't difficult. To, I mean, it, I didn't have. I was satisfied. I vaped in a day feel, approximately two meal, two, one two, two meal really? in an entire day. Right. So the next day, I used the Zenith, and I put my usual six milligram uh, eucalyptus menthol. You know, the one that's really, really the one that you, nobody likes. But that's my all day vape, right? So I took that and I put it into the Zenith. It, again, about 12 hours, give or take, you know, all day. I vaped about eight mils of liquid of six milligram. If you look at it mathematically, I probably vaped the, the exact same amount of nicotine, right? right. Because right. your body, that's one of the things about nicotine is your body tells you how much you want. If you right. need more, you will vape more. If you need less, you will vape less. That's why people, when they drop a lot of their nicotine, they seem to use it as a pacifier. I mean, they, a lot of them are just vaping on it constantly. It's not just the flavor. It's your body telling you that, hey, I need to maintain this plasma of nicotine in my bloodstream, so I have to keep vaping. Right. So, I mean, you know, that, that's, another, that's another point, right? So, assault nicotine can certainly be used uh, for people who want to back, out, back down on their consumption rate, mm-hmm. right? So higher nicotine, still smooth, and you back out, back off your uh, consumption rate. So we had a question in the chat: was um, is salt nicotine artificial nicotine that we're hearing about? And 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 it's not, as far it's as not. I know. No, it's not. It's just a different right. chemical extraction process right. that leaves a little bit more tobacco alkaloids inside, especially like WTAs back in the day. Uh, just a different, you know, they use a different uh, acid process too. That's why they call them salts. To uh, to increase the absorption rate in your bloodstream. That's why when you're vaping like on a Juul or something that's a 50 milligram, you get more of a head rush. Kind of like the, uh, I don't think, don't don't mistake me, you don't get high, but you get more of a head rush of a regular cigarette. You get that same right. sensation, especially if you puff on it back to back. Especially if people like us that have been used to uh, different levels of nicotine. Right. Okay. So I think that, yeah, absolutely, there are different levels of of, of salt and nicotine, and if that's something that you will need as a transitioning smoker, absolutely you should use it. Um, I am not for existing vapors unless they're having a hard time not going back to cigarettes trying salt and nicotine. Right. I just don't so, see the use for it. And there was a question uh, regarding that in the chat was, um, isn't it more addictive than traditional free-based nicotine? That's, right? what I, that's what I've heard as well, too, that it is more addictive. And we're seeing that, especially with the Juul and, and the, some of the younger generation. I think that there are addictive properties, just like anything that's going to give you that kind of effect into your bloodstream that fast. Okay, so it's not. I mean, look, is it is it bad? Uh, you know, I don't. Know. I think that we broke kind of the addiction through vaping because we can maintain. Maybe it's something that's bringing back um, a dependency that's a little bit more uh, exaggerated than than regular vaping. It might. 
But mm-hmm. on the other hand, you know, if you've been smoking for 20 years and you can't quit, I'd rather you vape on a 50 milligram salt than anything else. You know, there's just no doubt about it. I think there's a place well, and there's a time for every product that is out there. Also, if you're an existing vapor and you don't want to vape, let's say you can't vape all day because of your job. Your job does not allow you to vape, right? Uh, like where you used to work, Phil, at some point they told you that you can't vape at the office anymore. Right. Like it makes sense for you to have a 50 milligram salt, go inside the bathroom, take a couple of puffs. Get not, not inside the bathroom, outside. Outside, outside. outside well, whatever. And, well, I mean, I'd go in the bathroom. But anyway, that's just me. Uh, but t- just take a couple of puffs and, and, and get your nicotine and then go back and sit it down on your desk where you don't have to constantly puff. And that's what I noticed using the – and I did it with 20 milligrams. So, so I can imagine. I mean, a smoker probably needs more. But for my titration for the day, two meals was more than enough for me to titrate. And I found myself picking it up every 30 minutes, taking a couple of puffs. And different, different puffs – than what I'm used to. I am used to, I, you know, I do the three puff, kind of like you. Yeah. I, I pull one in, goes out through the nose, pull the second one, goes out through the nose, and then the third one, I inhale it, and it comes out through the mouth. With this one, I found myself that I was doing different pulls. I was just pulling once, inhaling the vapor inside, and I could feel, I mean, I, I, I wasn't buzzing or anything, but I could feel that the absorption of nicotine was faster. Well, and you know what, Dimitri, anything that can make you pull less is, is probably a good thing. Yes, that's true. Um, that's true. But uh, there was another really good comment in the chat, and this is something that I've been after for a long time, and, and Singer made the comment um, about basically a, a zero nicotine e-liquid that has throat hit, okay? Now, I've guys, I know a whole bunch of suggestions are going to pop up. I've tried the alcohols. I've tried uh, the capsaicin. I've, I've tried a whole bunch of different things, but I, I agree with him because I am not so sure that personally I am addicted to nicotine as much as I'm addicted to the sensation of that throat hit. Mm-hmm. So if I can get a nick, I am willing to work with any e-liquid company out there and, and promote the shit out of it because I think it would be a game changer um, to see if, if, if what I am really addicted to is the nicotine yeah. or it's the, the throat hit. Okay. Because I can tell you this, uh, I did a little experiment with, with salt nicotines and I picked up the fix. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was using the fix and I found myself, even though I was getting a a nicotine buzz, I wasn't getting satisfied by it because I didn't have that sharp, defined throat hit that I always talk about, right? So that would be an experiment that I would be all for. If somebody can come up with that same kind of sensation without nicotine inside, that's a billion dollar idea, not a million dollar idea. Flavor Arts flash hit did not work. It really did not. I mean, for me, it did not. I have not tried anything. I mean, I've tried many of those that have tried to mimic the throat hit, and no, nothing has worked for me personally. So, right. And I think you're. And um, to, uh, to, to, yeah, yeah, absolutely. To Robert Andrade, uh, Google is your friend. If you uh, Google vaping myths, uh, you will find a lot of vaping myths debunked yeah. much more than you just saw on that slide. Yeah. Okay, And we'll have this up on Test Your Juice anyway. All right, moving yeah. along because we have a lot to talk about. I just don't want to waste a lot of time. And uh, and this is something that that um, it's going to be ever evolving, but it's just kind of like the basis, <laughs> right? This is, where, this is where we all kind of start. That way it's not really overwhelming for, for a smoker that's transitioning to vaping. So common terms, Phil. All right. So here we go. Common terms. So, you know, when you get involved with vaping, you're going to get hit with a lot of terms. You're going to get hit with a lot of acronyms. This is just some of them, guys, some of them. So 510, what is it? Uh, 510 used to be a battery, uh, but that battery had a connection on it. Okay. And the 510 is the main connection that most devices use. And it is the connection to join the atomizer with the device. Okay. So that's what we were, we're talking about for the most part when we talk about a 510. Mm-hmm. Do you agree, Dimitri? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. The 510. Okay. And actually, uh, uh, we met, we met the guy that invented the 510. That was pretty cool. We did. We did in China. Mm-hmm. So then we have the atomizer, also known as an Addy. So this is something that you attach to your device. It will contain the heating element, the wicking, and the e-liquid for the most part. Now, there's a, a bunch of different types of atomizers. There's a rebuildable. Okay, in a rebuildable, you install, you create and install your own coil and wicking. Uh, there's also an RDA, which is a, build, a rebuildable dripping atomizer. Uh, we're going to talk about dripping in just a little bit. There's an RDTA, a rebuildable uh, tank atomizer. And there's RTAs, uh, rebuildable tank. Did I just put rebuildable tank atomizers twice there, you didn't did, I? You did. Yeah, yeah. it was okay. It was okay. okay. And then there's also replaceables. Okay, so replaceables are uh, a tank like the uh, like the Zenith, like the Nautilus, 
where you can get in that tank, you can unscrew the coil head and replace it with another coil head. And, and obviously, right? as somebody that's transitioning from smoking to vaping, the replaceable coil, especially at the beginning, is something that you should be looking into. I think Absolutely. that some of these terms you're going to pick up, especially if you go to a vape shop, you're going to hear a lot about these RDAs and RDTAs. But as somebody that is starting off, we highly suggest that you find a replaceable coil atomizer. It's going to be more, it's going to be, first of all, it's going to be inexpensive. Right. Compared to some of these closed systems that are out there. And it's going to make it's going to be less frustrating for you to start vaping versus having to build your own coils. And I made a, a note to fix RDTA, which obviously is rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. Okay? That's OK. We'll, we'll, we'll allow three, three mistakes. We found two so far. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Yeah. OK. So coils, coils, coils come in a lot of different varieties. Uh, we're going to talk about the coil materials uh, right now. Okay, so it started back in the day, mostly everything was nichrome, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, typically used in wattage mode, but on some devices, you can also use them in uh, temperature mode, <laughs> temperature control. Yeah. That's something we may not talk about in this mm -hmm. show because that'll confuse the hell out of, out of new, uh, new vapors. Uh, Canthal, uh, that is going to be used in only wattage mode, another uh, material that the coils are made of. Stainless steel, a, uh, a more recent and, and more popular material being used that can be used in both wattage and temperature control modes. And then we have titanium, typically uh, only used in temperature control. Control. Mm -hmm. and, and we forgot nickel. Uh, nickel. Uh, yeah, that's yes. a good point. Well, I kind of I kind of keep nickel out of everything uh, these I, days. I, yeah. I, I I don't blame you. I think that nickel is going to go away anyway because I'm not seeing I'm not seeing it being used. Uh, I mean, with stainless steel, that would be the way to go uh, as far as temperature control in the future. Okay. Another note here: add nickel. Okay. All right. Um. So then we have devices, right? And devices started being uh, called mods uh, years ago. But, I mean, really, if we think about, like, what a mod is and where that term came from, uh, it kind of came from the vaping community modding things, okay? Mm -hmm. Taking things that didn't really work very well and modding them into something that worked better, okay? So that's really kind of where the term mod came from. Like, when I think of a mod, I still think of somebody who, like, they took a, star, a toy Star Trek phaser and they modded it into a vaping device, yeah, they, right? They, they modified it into something that we actually can use to vaping, and right. that's how it all kind of that word kind of came about, and it just kind of stuck within the community. So it's something that you get—it's a common term, and you're going to hear a lot of it, right? So, um, you know, when when I think of mods, uh, you know, back in the day, the the, the mods that I used the most was the Lipton Pyramid Tea Bag mod, yeah. right? Which was a way to um, use a wicking material that worked better than the wicking materials that they were giving us in the atomizers back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where mod, and, and mods can generally be broken down into two major categories, uh, mechanical and regulated. Mm -hmm. So a mechanical is a device really that has no circuitry in it, okay? No circuitry, no regulation, uh, for the most part, no safety outside of like battery venting and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it really kind of should, they should be used by experienced and knowledgeable vapors. I'm going to, I'm going to make that, uh, that comment. And I'm going to stick by it. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, and, 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 and of course, battery safety is something that's really, really important with mechanical use. So that'd be something that you should be evolving into a journey of learning, uh, before attempting to use some of those devices. Right. And then we have regulated devices. Regulated devices are going to have circuitry. They're going to have built-in safety features. Um, a, a regulated device may or may not allow you to uh, adjust settings like uh, your wattage. And, you know, we could even talk uh, regulated. We could break it down even further. Uh, some regulated devices are going to actually be regulated, which means that the, uh, the vape quality is going to remain consistent over the course of your battery charge. And some don't. Some are, are going to, um, you know, the, your vape quality is going to diminish as your battery starts to go down. But if we talk about regulated, we really should be talking about a device where your vape quality is going to remain the same over the charge status of your battery. Correct. And it has a lot, a lot of protection features. Usually, uh, most of these devices have at least your basic protection features inside to, to protect from you know, any catastrophic failures happening while you're vaping. And we should talk about the uh, the different kinds of protection features in a future show. And I will sure. add that to my notes here. All yes. right. So then we got dripping. Uh, what's dripping? Uh, because they, they really there was a news article that that came out a while back, and they made dripping seem like it was like freebasing, right? Yeah, it's like a and, hack. That's what it, it's yeah. Like. So w all's dripping is is taking your e liquid and dripping it directly onto your coil and your wick, okay? So dripping is doing the same exact thing that a tank does automatically, only you're doing it manually, 
Okay. Uh, it's very popular. Uh, people, you know, they, they, they feel that they get a better flavor out of it. Uh, it's a way to change flavors, uh, really, really quickly. Um, for me, I don't drip much because I'm lazy. It's, yeah. it's, it's as simple as that, right? It's exactly right. <laughs> it's exactly right. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we can talk about resistance and, and resistance, uh, gets, gets a little bit complicated, especially for new vapors, but let, let's talk about it. Uh, the heating elements that we talked about, right. They come in different resistances, uh, and, and you know, differences here in different resistances, they're going to affect performance. They're going to affect power requirements for that coil. They're going to affect things like vape temperature. They're going to affect responsiveness and more. Okay. So we should probably talk a little bit more about resistance. Uh, maybe, you know, after we're done with this slide. Sure, sure. sure. Okay. Uh, we have squonking. Uh, squonking. What is squonking? Squonking is like upside down dripping, mm -hmm. sort of, right? So if you have a device that's a squonking device, underneath your atomizer, there's a little bottle of e-liquid. And what you do is you squeeze that little bottle of e-liquid and it ejects um, e-liquid up into your coil. OK, so it's really very, very similar to dripping, only instead of dripping directly down onto your atomizer, you're pushing that little bottle and it's feeding liquid up into your atomizer. OK, but again, with both dripping and squonking, you have to make sure that you do it. Otherwise, you're going to get a dry, scratchy hit. Absolutely. And and the formaldehyde that comes along with that. Right. Yes. yes. OK, sub ohm. What's sub ohm? Uh, in the simplest terms, it's a coil. You're, you're vaping on a coil that's less than one ohm. Now, there's there's some uh, confusion here. I hear it all the time that, you know, well, if you're sub ohming, you're definitely direct uh, lunging uh, and, and you're not mouth to lunging. That's well, not true. Th that's really not true. That's really not true. A perfect product uh, to, to use an example is the um, the Joytech AIO. When it first came out, it had 0.6 ohm coils. Right. But it was a fantastic mouth to lung vape. So. Direct to lung or mouth to lung has a lot more to do with uh, airflow, right? Chamber size, air velocity, than it does just the resistance of your coil. Right, and, and we're going to talk about the direct lung and the mouth to lung in a little bit in, in one of the next slides. But yep. I personally, I like a 0 0.8, 0 0.9 sometimes in in my tank. I so I build it down to there. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a direct lung. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Okay, so. We have throat hit, throat hit, extremely important for some people. I am one of those people. Okay. So the throat hit is it's the sensation or thump, right? That you get in the back of your throat when you're vaping. And that simulates the same sensation when you're smoking. It's almost like an irritation, right? It's almost like an irritation in the back of your throat that you get when you bring the, uh, the vapor, you know, past your mouth and you take it into your lungs, you get like a little kick in the back of your throat. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we call that throat hit. Yes. And it's something I think a lot of the smokers can relate to because that's one of the things that when you, when you start off, when you light your first cigarette, you get that burning in the back of your throat. And I think that's a lot of what a lot of the smokers are looking for. Right. So then we have a watt. What's a watt? A, a watt is a measurement of power, uh, that's being delivered to your heating element. Um, and, and I think there's more on that slide, but, uh, Google kind of cut it off, okay. but it, it, it's, it's, it's an adjustment for your device. Mm -hmm. Now, back in the day, uh, we weren't adjusting in Watts. We were adjusting in volts. Okay. And then uh, a little company came, uh, 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 by the name of Evolve came along and they changed how we did things. Okay. Yeah. So we used to adjust in volts. Now for the most part, we adjust in Watts and Watts is just a, a, a measurement of power. Yeah. Okay? And, and, and it's just a, a way, how do you, how do you increase your heat, right? You go from from uh, from a cooler vape to a warmer vape depending on your resistance and that's basically all it is it's just basically an adjustment think about it as your heater if you're so cold, volume control yeah if you if it's a, if it's cold you turn up the heat a little bit if it's too cold you, i mean if it's too hot you, you reverse it the other way all right uh i have uh this slide here let me uh exit from here and go to okay. here and see if right there read that there it is. There it is. This is, uh, this is uh, uh, I think, one of the most important uh, when, when, when we're seeing, especially lately from China, a lot of packaging that's actually using these two uh, terminologies, MTL and DL. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's a really good thing, especially, especially if it's actually inside <laughs> the package what it says on the outside, right? So yeah, these, are sure. these are two terms that basically describe the style of, of, of vaping, right, Phil? Yes, and I have to fix bringing, bringing. 
It's brining the vapor. You're just brining the vapor. Wait, yeah, well, brining the vapor is also – that's also a creating salt and nicotine. I think that's how you make <laughs> the salt true, nicotine. <laughs> you just broke the code. I mean, unbelievable. So, so how can we describe this as easily as possible? And here, here's what I thought. Here's how I thought of it, okay? If you smoke, you probably already know mouth-to-lung, okay? So mouth-to-lung is the act of bringing the smoke or the vapor into your mouth first, okay, and then breathing it in to your lungs. Okay, so if you smoke, I would say 99.9% .9 of smokers out there um, are going to be mouth-to-lung style. Mm -hmm. They're going to use the mouth-to-lung style. Now, of course, you're going to see people in the chat say, well, I direct lunged my cigarettes. I'm like, well, God bless you. I don't know how you did that, mm -hmm. but there are still some people that did that. Now, if, let's say in your college days, um, or maybe even just yesterday, uh, <laughs> You smoked one of those funny-looking cigarettes, okay, and after you were done smoking that funny-looking cigarette, you passed it to your partner, and you said, ear, okay? You probably know what direct lunging is, right. okay? So direct lunging is kind of bypassing the mouth. What you do is you breathe it directly into your lungs, okay, without taking it. Of course, it's got to go into your mouth first, right? But it's it's direct lunging, or some people call it lung hitting as well. Yeah. So, I mean, those basically are the two major styles of vaping today. Now, of course, that's going to get broken down into direct lung, restricted direct lung, yeah. you know, um, uh, uh, mouth to lung, super, super tight mouth to lung, proper mouth to lung. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> But that, I mean, really, that's that's the major styles of vaping. The, and, and there's some variations. I mean, slipstream. There's a little bit of restricted uh, direct lung. We get all that. But these are the two basics, and this is what what's more important. Uh, I would like to see vape shops um, follow what Phil had said one day. Try to create an experience in the vape shop as well, too. So when you go, if you're a smoker and you want to go into a vape shop to try vaping, ask to try both ways. Because mm -hmm. you might find that one does not suit your style right. or one does not satisfy you enough. So right. it's very, very important for a vape shop to have both of these atomizers, at least the style, so it can mimic exactly the experience that the user is going to have. Right. And we could probably talk on this subject for a long time, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of devices out there and kits out there that call themselves starter kits, right? Yeah. Uh, and that starter kit is a 200-watt device with a tank that has 17 coils into it. Uh, and, the, and there's no way to get it tight. It, it's, it's a wide open draw. Mm -hmm. Okay. To me, that's not a starter kit. All yeah, right. To yeah. me, that's, that's an advanced kit uh, or that's a direct lung kit or it's a sub ohm kit. It's not a starter kit. Yeah. So it, it's really important. And, and, you know, we've heard both sides of the story. We've heard people who have gone into vape shops. They were sold something like that, that I just talked about. And they couldn't wrap their head around it. They were they were unsuccessful. It was an experience that they weren't used to. And we've also heard the stories where you know uh, the people who tried to start with a direct lung kit they weren't satisfied until they moved to or they started with a mouth to lung kit and they weren't satisfied until they went to a direct lung kit. Right. So it, and that's why you know Dimitri just talked about vape shops with you know all vape shops have tasting bars. But I think it would be really important for a vape shop to have an experience bar, too, so that you can give that smoker the different styles and say, OK, what are you most comfortable with? What do you want? Um, because I, I still firmly believe that somebody who is a 60 year old smoker who's been smoking their entire lives since they're 16 years old. Right. If you give them something that's direct lung to start with they're not going to be able to wrap their heads around that. They're yeah. not going to be, yeah. they're not going to have uh, a comfortable uh, experience and an experience that they're used to. Yeah. Right. And, and I, gonna... I, I want to point out something. I know you guys are, you know, some of the vapors are going to make some jokes on, on this, on this, uh, on this topic, but there might sure. be some smokers watching and there might be some smokers reading the chat. So try to be a little bit more sensitive with the comments. Cause you get somebody at 200 Watts with 17 calls to start. <laughs> it's it's going to be, it's not going to be very, very good for me. And I know you're just joking. I just wanted to point that out that there might be some smokers that are actually watching this right now. All right, moving on to the next slide. We've got to get through this quick field. Time is passing. Uh, well, I know, I, lost, I know. I lost, I lost my mouse. <laughs> it's, going to, it's going across, <laughs> it's going across three screens right now. All right. So Types of EVPs, by the way, I love that word, EVP, love it. EVPs, man, okay. So device or mod, we already talked about that. The device or the mod itself, without the tank attached, it's a power supply. It's basically a power supply. Uh, it requires an atomizer to operate. So that's a device or a mod. We have the all-in-one systems, the AIOs. 
uh, that is going to be a device that incorporates the atomizer into it. It's all one piece, okay? Uh, devices, mods, and AIOs, they come in different form factors. Uh, some of them are sticks, some of them are tubes, uh, some of them are boxes, um, all kinds of varieties, shapes, and sizes out there for you to choose from. Now, uh, we have open and closed systems. So this is something that Dimitri talked about at the very uh, start of the show. What is an open system? Those products allow you to open them and refill them with your own e-liquid. Okay, that is an open system. And then we have closed systems. What are closed systems? Typically, pod-style devices like the Jewel, okay? Uh, you are not allowed to refill them. Some people find ways, okay, but they're not designed to, to do to do that, right? So once your, uh, your pod or your tank or whatever it is is empty of e-liquid, uh, you generally need to purchase a new tank or pod. Uh, it does not allow you to fill it. Uh, and then we have disposables. Disposables are kind of like closed systems, right? But the entire device is throwaway after you're done using it. Yeah. I, I, th I think that the, the variety that is out there, everybody can find something that they're going to be comfortable using to make the transition. You know, and, and, and I, I think that depending, there's so many factors that go into what you choose to use. And I think that, you know, your work has a lot to do with it, what you're used to, how much you smoke, how heavy of a smoker or how light of a smoker you were, you know, what your environment is, uh, where do you live? You know, I mean, there's some remote places that don't have vape shops, you know, I mean, believe it or not. Right. So, oops, I just lost the chat. So let me oh, switch. What up. happened? That's okay. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Okay, you fix it. Uh, we go, go ahead and carry on. I just want to make sure. Uh, there we go. And that is the Smoker Show. Boom. See, I fixed it. See how quick that was? Um, That's amazing. But but there are people that live remo in remote areas. Remember, Jeannie used to live in the boonies. You know, she could, she, there's no vape shops over there. So you're going to have to depend on mail order to get your stuff inside. And you have to plan ahead. So find what works for you. Um I think that a lot of the smokers, what they're looking for is good battery life, and they're looking for a satisfying vape. I think we can get the satisfying vape. I just don't think we have the battery yet to combine those two to come up with a perfect device to get people to quit smoking. And that's why we're seeing some of these devices get bigger and bigger, even the pod systems that are out there. Yep, but we're seeing we're seeing devices go in both different both directions at this point. We're seeing them get smaller and smaller and bigger and bigger, right? Yes. Which I think is a good thing. Yes. Uh, one of the things that we want to just briefly touch on is, uh, yeah, this this is actually me uh, work, <laughs> working with temperature control. It's actually a picture of me. <laughs> So I think I think at this point for this show, mm -hmm. that is as far uh, with temperature control as we're going to go. And that's why we put it up there. We wanted people to see that temperature control is something that is not recommended for somebody that's starting, especially the way that it is done right now. OK, hopefully yeah. the technology will evolve where it's going to be easier and easier for people to be using temperature control. But as it stands right now, it's it's difficult. It's difficult yeah. to achieve a good and satisfying way. Right. Unless you have like a, like a device um, like that, that is a pod system that's using temperature control behind the scenes, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to adjust or set it. Um, you know, that's something that, you know, as a, as a smoker, you might be interested in, but, you know, setting your coil type and your coil material and your TCR values and your wattage and your, your preheats and everything, that's something that we don't want to talk about in this show. Uh, let's say now I started to vape. I, I decided to pick up a kit. And uh, what can help me stay off cigarettes? Don't give up. Don't give yeah, up. Yeah. You know, uh, I've, I've, I've heard from a lot of people that, you know, uh, well, I tried vaping five years ago and it didn't work for me. So I'm just smoking now. Um, guys, look. There are so many products on the market. There are so many incredibly satisfying products on the market. There are so many different e-liquids and nicotine strengths and now salt e-liquids that if you can't quit, and I've said this so many times, if you can't quit with what we have available to us today, either you don't want to quit or you're just not trying hard enough. And, and, okay? and, and you might not be ready as well, too. I think right, if you look at compare where we were five years ago, six years ago, if you did try an, a, a, an EVP back then, and it wasn't satisfying, go give it another chance. Uh, give it another chance. There's, the, the technology has gotten so much better right now, and it's so much more satisfying to give it another shot. And it's inexpensive to try as well, too. Go ahead. Yep. Um, identify the device that is right for you, not what they're trying to sell you, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. You know, when you go into a vape shop uh, and you don't know anything, you are kind of at the mercy of what I call the guy or the girl behind the counter. 
right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, do a little bit of research, you know, understand what you're going in, uh, uh, understand what you're looking at, understand the different styles of vaping, understand nicotine levels. There is some, some, some things, some research that you should be doing before I think you walk into a vape shop, unless you walk into a really good vape shop. And there are a lot of really good vape shops out there who are going to be, who are going to be able to identify what you need and sell you the right product. Yeah, I think one of I think one of the, the the easiest tips that I can give you is that when you walk into a vape shop, if somebody tells you without even talking to you, this is what you need, maybe you should turn around and walk out. You should ask the questions, right? Tell them what you do, tell them how much you smoke. And if they're receptive to those questions and you see that they're being interested to actually help you quit smoking, then give it a shot. If you see that there's a complete apathy of just trying to get a kit down and just sell you, you know, a hundred dollar kit to get, just turn around and walk around. You don't have to to purchase anything unless you're ready and if it's something that's right for you. Right. Um, so the next uh, the next bullet here is experiment with different flavors, which I think is really, really important. We have some amazing flavors uh, on the market now. Um, you know, but I'll, I'll, I'll make this statement too, that when I first started vaping, I didn't give a shit about, mm-hmm. um, you know, cherry or watermelon or peach. Or I, didn't, I didn't care about any of that. All I cared about was give me a, a flavor, give me an e-liquid that as closely matched my Marlboro Light as possible. That's all I cared about, mm-hmm. right? And then all of a sudden, you know, I tried a watermelon and I was like, oh my God, I can I can smoke watermelon. How cool is that, right? So, um, you know, if you're not into all of these fancy flavors we have uh, today, start with a tobacco. Try different tobaccos at your, uh, your vape shop. Um, experiment with that first try a a, a stronger nicotine uh, you know so many people are are so like they're just they just want to be off that nicotine they want to drop that nicotine level as fast as possible but give yourself some time to make the adjustment right yeah. give you, give yourself some time to be successful with it before you drop the nicotine remember nicotine may not be the enemy here it's 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 the delivery system that we have in a traditional tobacco cigarette that is the enemy yeah and uh, just to touch on a couple of things going back to the flavors the receptors in your mouth after you know smoking for a lot of years are all clogged up nicotine actually the way that it's delivered through smoke clogs up your uh, if the first thing that the dentist told me when i quit smoking Uh-oh. is like what what? No, you 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 broke up. You stopped. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So if if, right. if, if uh, the receptors in your mouth start opening up when you quit smoking, so something that tastes to you good today um, might not taste good to you tomorrow, and vice right. versa. Something that you didn't like watermelon, like I don't want a watermelon. A week from you quitting smoking might actually taste really good. I had that for the first two years of vaping. My tastes were evolving and changing constantly. I'd find a liquid that I really like, and two months later, guess what? I didn't like it anymore. Just overnight, just like that. And that was just the receptors in my mouth that were opening up. And going back to the nicotine that you said, vaping is, the the goal of vaping is not for you to reduce nicotine. I don't know where this started and what company is trying to sell that. Vaping is an alternative to smoking, and it's a way to get cleaner and safer your nicotine. So don't be afraid of nicotine, especially if you need it to quit smoking, right? The, reducing right. the nicotine should not be your goal with vaping. Being satisfied right. should be. Right. And and believe me, we're, we're not trying to be the next people that are going to hook you on nicotine. That is not our goal. That is not who we're talking to, okay? We're trying to talk to smokers out there who could potentially leave, lead a safer lifestyle through vaping, okay? So we're not trying to make new nicotine addicts. Mm-hmm. We're trying to get you off of the cigarettes, okay? So that's the goal of this show. Um, and I'll tell you a little story that I, that I, I tell a lot. Uh, and this is going back a couple of years ago. I was talking with Dr. Farsalinos, who's a, a, a very popular uh, physician. He's a cardiologist, right? Yeah. In the uh, in in Greece. And he's a and researcher. Talk- right. And I was talking to him about uh, reducing my nicotine level. And I said, "Hey, Doc. I said I, I think this is the year where I drop a little bit lower than my, my 12 milligram." And he said, uh, "Why do you want to do that?" I, I said, "Well, you know, because it's better for me, right?" He goes, "Do you think you're going to vape more?" And I said, well, you know, maybe, probably, I, I guess I might because, you know, your body is still going to, you know, want to you want to take in more nicotine. He says, no. He said, don't drop your nicotine. He goes, if anything, raise your nicotine level and vape less, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's the exposure, the exposure that's going to have the harmful things, right? right. Um, we want to expose ourselves to less of this and still be satisfied. Uh, this is a very important one that you have here on this, and this don't change your habits. I think this is something that, again, not a lot of vape shops uh, recommend, especially to new smokers. 
Right. So like, you know, if, if you get up in the morning and you have your morning cup of coffee and your cigarette, get up in the morning and have your morning cup of coffee and have a vape. Mm-hmm. Right. If, uh, you know, if you uh, enjoy your cigarette after sex, you know, Dimitri doesn't have to worry about that at all. Not uh, anymore. But, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to I'm going to offer another uh, suggestion, too. And, and this worked for a couple of people. Um so you have some tanks and you have some tanks with your different all days and, and you know, you're, you're transitioning into vaping uh, and you have your, your delicious, uh, you know, peach watermelon flavor and your delicious banana, br- uh, b- uh, what do you call it? Uh, banana bread flavor or whatever. Um, and, and you, you, you still, yeah, you're craving that cigarette, right? You're a new vapor. You're craving that cigarette. Here's what you do. Here's what you try. Okay. Have yourself a little tank of uh, tobacco as close to the, uh, uh, whatever you like, Right. But maybe as close to your cigarette as possible. Try a bunch of different tobacco flavors. Find one that you really like. Have a tank of that in like a ridiculously high nicotine, 18 Mm -hmm. milligram, 24 milligram or a a high uh, nicotine salt. Right. So when you have that craving for a cigarette, drop your fruity flavors, drop your bakery flavors, pick up your tank with your your nicotine and and your tobacco flavor Mm -hmm. and use that as your cigarette. Right. Get your fix, get your hit, get your nicotine buzz. And then when you're done with that and you feel satisfied, go back to your fruity and your bakery flavors. Okay, so that's that's something that you can try. Good advice. All right. Uh, Reach out with questions and for support. This is one of the things that uh, obviously helped me back in the day is because uh, as soon as I found vaping, I got online and found a very good support system. Of course, there was. Not that many vapors at the time, we were all online, but through YouTube videos and so forth, and the forums at the time, ZCF, and eventually Facebook, we were able to create an online support community. I guarantee you, as a smoker, if you reach out to any vapor for help, I think that 99.9% of the vapors will be there to support you and to help you. Absolutely. And you know what? Like Even with me, guys, there is no such thing as a dumb question. There's a... Like I said, the whole purpose of this, uh, and and it's going to be review for most of you, but for somebody out there, like I said at the beginning of the show, somebody out there is picking up an electronic cigarette for the very first time, and they have all of these questions that we know, like the back of our hand at this point, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to be um, tolerant, I guess, or understanding of of people who have what they consider dumb questions. I mean, I could remember posting something on the ECF years ago. We're talking about 2009, where I actually put this post out there. I just got nicotine. I, I just got e liquid on my hand. Am I going to die? Yeah. Okay. And you know, that's something that we, of course, you know the answer to, but other people don't. Other yeah. people don't. So never think that your question is too stupid to come to me with or to go to Dimitri with. Um, we're more than willing to answer every question that you guys might have. And we're willing to take you by the hand. And just a couple more tips here just to throw out. You know, vaping, obviously, if you feel the need, don't be afraid to pick up the PV and vape. If you feel the need, just pick it up and vape. There's no, there's, no th- there's no beginning and end like a cigarette when it comes to vaping. So if your body tells you that you need more nicotine, just pick it up and vape. Don't be afraid to use it. And don't be afraid to use it for more than 5, 10 minutes of what you're used to uh, with, a, with a cigarette. Uh, but keep in mind, the more that you vape, since we do use VG and PG in our liquids, especially with some of the higher VGs, you are going to dehydrate. Right, You are going to be constipated. Some people get constipated at the beginning. That's all because of the dehydration. So make sure that you drink a lot of fluids. A lot of yeah. fluids, especially when you begin to vape, that will avoid some of the dryness that you're going to get simply from vaping constantly. Did you get constipated when you started yes. vaping? I, no, there was no constipation. Are you sure? I definitely had dry mouth. I definitely had dry mouth. Are you sure? But, what? Are you sure? Do you remember? Do you even remember if you had constipated right there? I think I would remember that. I think that would st- that would kind of stick out there. Uh, you know, I'll give you I'll give you my experiences with vaping. Okay, yeah, yeah. what happened? What yeah. happened? Here's the first thing that happened was my sense of smell came back. Okay, yeah. that's the first thing that happened. And I'll never forget because I was working at the nightclubs back then, yeah. and I walked into the nightclub and I said to myself, "Oh my God, it stinks in here." I could smell like the rotting beer. I could smell like you know, just like the, the the cigarette smoke in the air. Yeah. Um, so that was the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened, um, my sense of taste started to come back. Everything started tasting a little bit better. Mm-hmm. In my case, mm, that's probably not a good thing, right? Okay. Um, I noticed that I didn't get winded uh, as much as I got when I was smoking. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, I, tr- I truly believe, I truly believe that, that vaping has saved my life. I truly believe that if I was not a vapor today, if I was still smoking cigarettes, I would have had a heart attack by now. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the, the one like really measurable thing that happened to me, and there was actually a study that came out on this was I was always susceptible to upper respiratory tract infections, mm-hmm. got them all the time. Okay. When I quit smoking and started vaping, I haven't had one. Since 2009, that's that's impressive. I haven't had one, and I know other people have had similar experiences, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, that that was something that happened to me that was like really measurable, yeah, right. And it's it's really funny because I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat by people that you know there's there's a few trolls as well too, but I'm seeing a lot of comments from people that have actually quit smoking and vaping. You see, they feel better. They can they can shovel the snow anymore. I mean, these are real people that are using these products, and your health will improve. It's improved for a lot of people out there that have that have transitioned this product. And finally, you know, whatever vape is good for you, whatever works for you, that's the best vape. I think a lot of people feel intimidated. Uh, I've I've heard people that don't go to shows anymore because of their they're embarrassed because of the device that they're using. You shouldn't be. Anything right. that you're using, whether it's a small battery, whether it's a pod system, whether it's a big you know, six battery mod, whatever you're using to quit cigarette, that is the best device for you. Right. Yeah. And, you know, like I'm looking at some more of the comments in the, uh, in the yeah. chat. Like uh, I see something that, that says, you know, stay away from the Soren. So if somebody is in this chat right now and they're using the Soren and they're yeah. satisfied by it, you know, that, that's not a good comment. Right. 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 Um, it's uh, it's it's basically the last thing that I say on that last slide is what's the perfect device? And I've said this so many times. There is no such thing as a perfect device. It's yeah. only the device that's perfect for you. OK, yeah. so that's like, you know, what's the best for you? What's the best color, the best hand feel, the best draw, yeah. the best liquid, the best nicotine? Yeah. There, there's a lot of variables that you have to kind of dial in and tune in to find what's best for you, yeah. but stick with it, stick yeah. with it because you can, you know, be not a smoker anymore. I, and that's, that's kind of cool. I, I, I think, you know, when, when you're looking at it from the perspective of a smoker, because this is a smoker show. Okay. This is not a vapor show. We want to, we want to make sure that you understand what the purpose of the show is, right? We right. get it that most of the people know what the, what they're doing at this point. If you've been vaping for six months, a year, five years, two years, I get it. But the purpose of introducing smokers to vaping Number one, I saw a very good comment in the chat that usually the vape shops, and this is not all of them, but there's a lot of vape shops that want to sell you what they make the most margin on or what they want to get rid of. I get that. I really do get that. But there's a lot of good shops out there. And trust me that there are moves being made by big companies to try to squash our industry. So what we want to do is at least send the smoker here to see a couple episodes before they make the decision to go into a vape shop to purchase something. Okay. At least they're going to have some background. They'll know what it is. They'll know what the, what the correct questions are to ask. And hopefully they'll guide them to find something uh, before, like you said, they go into a vape shop and they get reamed or they get, they, they get taken advantage of. So that is exactly the purpose of what this show is. And, right. and speaking of the story, and I have a couple of them right here. It was part of my show and tell because I did, again, another little experiment, Phil. I put 12 milligram nicotine of Freebase uh, Duke in this uh, drop, and then I put 20 milligram uh, of Saltnik in the Surin, uh, the square one. And I'll be honest with you, I prefer the vape off the square one better than the little one. That's just me. That's just the Sorin Square one. Is yeah. that the official name for that? The Sorin Square one. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's called. It's the air. But, the Sorin, but eventually, the through the through this program, we are going to be doing live reviews on these products. So just keep sure. that in mind. But I just wanted to do a little experiment to see what I'm satisfied with most, most in a pod system, right? And I prefer the vape quality that I get out of this. And why do I prefer that quality? Because I get an instant hit. And I think that that is something that smokers need to have, okay? I have tried pod systems. Um, this is a disposable, not a disposable, but a rechargeable PCC case that has just a little electronic cigarette inside, right? If I just I just pulled this out of the case now it's fully charged feel right fully charged. Mm-hmm. Watch this. I'm gonna take a puff on it. Okay. See, that's right. That's, that's you gotta work got. it. Right, you gotta but work I gotta work it. it. You gotta I gotta work it. Yep. I gotta work it. Right. If I work yep. it, work it, work it, work it. So now I got a little bit better. Me as a vapor, I know this, right? I right. know that I have to prime this to work. 
Right. A smoker does not. So once he takes that, because a cigarette, you just boom, you just light it, and you get boom, you immediately get that hit. If you have to work this hard to get a good quality vape, this is not going to help you quit smoking. In fact, it's going to aggravate you because you're not going to be satisfied. One of the well, things you that, know, yeah, go ahead. That, that's really something that that smokers, okay, when you're coming into vaping, you, you do have to change your mindset a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. So there's there's certain things that you're going to have to deal with, and, and that's something that we could talk about in a different show yeah, yeah, or yeah, a future yeah. show. Sure. Uh, you know, there's there's troubleshooting that you're going to have to sure, deal sure, with. Sure, sure, sure. Um, a, a lot of devices are going to work really, really well out of the box. Some of them you're going to have to deal with some issues. Um, but one of the most important things that I su can suggest is that it's not a cigarette. Okay. It's not a cigarette. So how does a cigarette work? Well, a cigarette, if you pull on it, you get instant satisfaction. And if you pull on it harder, what happens? The cherry gets hotter, right? The cherry gets hotter. So in a way, in a way, a cigarette, it really is a variable wattage device, right? But it's, it, it's variable depending on how hard you draw on it. Now that doesn't happen with electronic cigarettes. So you kind of have to slow down a little bit, take a slower deliberate draw okay maybe work it a little bit maybe get the, the temperature of the coil up yeah. uh, if, if it isn't if it isn't you know responsive enough but you, there is a little bit of a, a, a change in a mindset to, to to help you there's things that you can do and things you need to think about to help you be a successful vapor yeah and and, and i think that's why we're looking back at uh, at somebody that's going to make that move especially if they're going to pick up a pod system as well too i like refillable pod systems I think rather refillable pod systems have a place in the market, and I definitely believe that they, they belong in the vape shop more than I do for a closed pod system. Uh, but that, that's not here or there, and that's definitely for a different discussion uh, further down the line. But when we're talking about these systems that we have available, now, we have really good systems available on the market right now, pod systems that, if matched with a correct liquid, can be very, very beneficial for smokers to quit. And I right. think that's another problem that we're seeing, especially in the vape shops in the market, because they want to sell this high VG, low nicotine liquid where people are going to go through it faster. If you're going to match up a pod like this and put three milligram high VG liquid inside, it's not going to help you quit smoking. It's not. It's not going to work. It's, it's definitely not going to work simply because those liquids are not designed to go with systems like this. You need right. a higher nicotine, you need a higher PG liquid that's going to give you a more enjoyable vape. As I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a, a really good vape off the credit card vape. I'm going to call it the credit card Soren. How about the that? Soren Air. The Soren Air. Air. <laughs> But I think, you know, that's that's important and, and, and something to think about, right? Because yeah. when you walk into a vape shop, what you're going to see typically is a massive wall of e-liquid, okay? Yeah. A massive wall of e-liquid. So if you go in there and you buy a Soren Air, right, and you also, you know, pick out – I like I like the, the look of that label right there. I like that. That's the one that I want. And the one that you just pointed at was a 3 milligram, 90% VG – Hopefully, yeah. hopefully the guy behind the counter or the girl behind the counter is going to tell you, well, that's probably not the best yeah. e-liquid for that device, right? So it really is important for you to get the right kind of e-liquid for the device. And, you know, th this is where vaping today is a little bit more complex than vaping of like when I started, which was 2009, right? Because back then it was pretty much... 70 30 pg vg mm -hmm. right uh, yeah. would you agree i mean that's really yeah, kind of where i, 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 I tell you, back in the day it was even it was, it was even worse than that but uh, right. i agree with you i agree with you now i mean you are going to have the people that definitely need to have something different to quit smoking there's no doubt about it but the only way that you can discover that is if you actually try it out yourself you have to be able to go hands on and do it and try it out yourself i think it's very very important I'm getting a right. comment that uh, we should have a moderator in the chat. Yeah, eventually we will. Don't worry. This is our first episode. Don't worry. We're, 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 we're willing to deal with, with everything. So let's talk about a kit, okay? Let's talk about a kit. Okay. I think that's something that, uh, since Inokin is our sponsor here, one of the good kits that are out there, I think, that w that's been withstood the test of time is the Endura T18, right? I mean, yeah. this is a kit that lasted two, three years on the market. It became something very, very popular to get people to quit smoking. And then they evolved into the Inokin T20S. And it's something that I want to bring up because I think that the T20S has kind of taken the T18 where it should have been with the bottom coil uh, that makes it just a little bit easier to change, a little bit more messy. It's less messy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Less messy. Of course, you do with the uh, with the T20s. You are going to have. You see, my 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 lights are flashing. Um, with the T20s, you are going to have to uh, drain the tank first, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, once you uh, once you drain the tank, or if your tank is empty, um, actually, I could probably do, well, I can't do it right here because I'll I'll dump e liquid all over right, the place. Right. But uh, so if I unscrew this right here, 
uh, what we find is that 510 connection that we just talked about, right? Uh, if this tank was drained, I'm going to unscrew uh, the little air ring right here, and I'm just going to pull the, the coil out. I'm going to prime the coil. Priming the coil is something that I talk about in every single video that I do when it comes to you know, tanks or coils. Yeah. Uh, it's very important because it's it's not something. So what did we do as smokers? Well, we, we pulled a stick out of a box and we lit it on fire. That was it. Yeah. That was it. That's all we had to know. That's all we had to know. Um, but with, you know, modern day tanks, they use uh, a wicking uh, material, right? And typically that wicking material is going to be cotton. Now, here's the thing, okay? If that cotton isn't saturated with e-liquid, what's going to happen is you're going to push the button and you are going to burn that cotton instantly, instantly. There's no getting that coil head back. It's never coming back. Head. Never coming right? back. You know, if you're using a, a coil head with cotton, it doesn't come back. It will always taste bad. Uh, you, 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 it's done, right? Yeah. So, you know, unfortunately with vaping, that's another step that we have to take. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have to prime those coils. We have to get the, that cotton, uh, you know, saturated with e-liquid. You don't want to oversaturate it. You want to get, you know, just the right amount. Yeah. Um, and, and then you can use it. Of course, the other thing you could do is you can fill it and let it sit for a while. Okay. Yeah. And let that e-liquid work its way into the cotton. But the priming, you know, it's another step that we have to take in vaping right now. But it is definitely something that is extremely important before you take that first. Vape. That would be a billion dollar idea. How do you avoid the step of priming the coal? Right. That would be that would be, in my opinion, would be um, uh, really innovation when it comes to to vaping because every replaceable coal tank, whether it's a, a sub ohm or a mouth to lung tank, ha you have to prime the coal or else it's not going to it's just not going to work. Yep. Uh, you, you're going to have that burnt coal. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, and then we're going to take some questions and end this so it doesn't go too long. We don't want to make okay. it a, a, a whole saga. Um, you, you get this question all the time, right? You get this question all the time. What should people start off with, right? I, I'm sure you get tons of email. Like, I'm trying to help my mom get off cigarettes. I'm trying to help my dad. I'm trying to help my friend. You know, how do you direct them? It's a really good question. You know, I... I uh, I recommended the Innocent T18 for a really, really long time um, because I think the, the the temperature is similar to uh, a cigarette. I think the draw is similar to a cigarette. I can tell you my wife still uses the T18. She won't use anything else. Yeah. Um, but I think it's it's important to, to start off with something that simulates that cigarette as close as possible, yeah. right? And I think that's not only draw, but I think that's nicotine strength. And I think it's also size too, yeah. right? I, I think, you know, size matters in this case. Yeah. Now, uh, a lot of folks, you know, they're going to see something like this, okay? Uh, they're going to be very, very turned off by that. Mm -hmm. Some people won't, right? So again, it's all about personal preference. It's about, you know, what's right for you. But that that's what I would recommend is something that is very, very similar to a cigarette, yeah. um, something that has the, uh, a similar draw to a cigarette, um, something that's going to have enough nicotine in there to satisfy you, mm -hmm. um, and, and then go from there, right? Uh, there's, there's, uh, you know, a, a thousand different directions you can go from there, but I think the, the most important first step is to become a satisfied vapor and a successful vapor, right? I, I, think it's, I think it's important to get feedback as well, too. I think that's something that we're missing. I think when somebody tries vaping and it doesn't work, we don't. We're not getting the feedback of why it didn't work. I don't know if you remember, but there was a Europe um, um, study done. Basically, it, it goes across Europe and it collects data, you know, from smokers and, and vapors alike. And they had said that 39% had tried vaping. This is coming from 2015. 39% had tried out of you know the people that tried vaping. 39% tried it and didn't like it. I wish there was more questions in that category of why they didn't like it did it why? leak did it burn did it leak the battery didn't like it. it didn't taste good if we could i tell you what i did uh and again was kind enough to send me these these 220 s's so i've been on facebook that if you want to start a kit for the new year i'll send you out with some liquid and get you to try out so i actually mailed them out they, they actually left this morning so what I've, I've sent i think 12 if i'm not mistaken out to people that are either going to hand it to a smoker or to smokers directly that were part of my facebook so, or people that messaged me and said, hey, can you send a kit to this person? They're trying to quit. All I asked from them is to come back in a week and tell me, right? Come back in a week and tell me what your experience was. And I think if we do the same thing on this show, if we're going to start passing out kits, we want people to come back and tell us what 
their experience was because that is the only thing that's going to help us improve and get more smokers to try vaping and try to get more people to vape. I agree. I agree. And, you know, uh, we're not going to do it in this show, uh, but the, the plan is to, uh, to we really want you guys, okay, especially if you're vapors. Mm-hmm. I mean, the goal here is for you to direct your friends, your family members, yeah. other loved ones to the show, right? To the show. Because, again, this is a show for smokers. It's really not a show for vapors, right? Um, and, and, and we definitely don't have a budget to compete with Philip Morris to get the advertising out. So we depend on you guys a lot. <laughs> So, um, you know, that's the goal. And we do want to, uh, to start, um, you know, uh, offering uh, starter kits to folks, you yeah. know, starter kits uh, from Inikin or from other sponsors who, who come along um, and, and hear what the experience is and was. Yeah. Were you successful? Were you not? What did yeah. you like? What didn't you like? Um, that's all good stuff. That's all good information. And, and there should be some kind of investment. And I mean, I, I believe, you know, I, I, what I've seen in the last, you know, seven, eight years, and I've seen a lot of kids. I've seen, I, what I see is that you don't want to spend too much on your starter kit. You want to have a small investment, but you have to be invested in it somehow. Right. Because if you're not, you're not going to be serious about it as you would have been if you had financially invested. That's always been my experience. Now, not for everybody, but I think the yeah. majority the majority see it like that. If you give somebody a kit, it doesn't work out. Like, ah, I didn't have nothing in it. It didn't work. I'm going to throw it away. But what we did in the day, especially because there weren't so many devices and we had to order stuff from the mail, right, to get it in, if something came in and didn't work or it didn't work as we wanted to, we tried to make it work better because we wanted to stay off cigarettes as well. Too. We didn't have the choices that we have today when you go into a vape shop and there's over 200 devices in a vape shop. We didn't have those choices back then. We had right. a limited amount of choices. So... Things are a little bit different. Right. Um, and and, and I, I agree with what you said there because we're going to do something in this show that I'm absolutely not a fan of, okay? Mm-hmm. And that's handing out free kits, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Because well, like you said, you know, if you're vested in it, mm-hmm. if you have your own money in it, uh, chances are you're, you're going to try a little bit harder at it. Yeah. Perfect example, okay? I am a member of a health club. And that health club is nine dollars a month. Yeah, I never go to that health. If that health club was a hundred dollars a month, mm-hmm. I'd be on that treadmill all the time. Yeah, I'm, yeah I get seriously. You. I mean, that, that's a, a perfect example, yeah. right? Absolutely, absolutely. But um, you don't have to invest a lot. You don't. You don't. You Not don't. Today. That, th- that's another. That's another really good myth, right? Vaping yeah. is more expensive than than smoking. Okay, for. A lot of people who are on the chat right now, probably. Mm-hmm. For me sometimes, yeah, probably. For Dimitri sometimes, probably. But it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. You have to there, – there's consumables that you have to buy. That's going to be your e-liquid and your coils, yeah. right? And then there's going to be your one-time purchase of a device, Absolutely. right? And, and- – and, you know, I, I, did, I did something on Taste Your Juice a long time ago where I, I compared, like, the current price of a pack of cigarettes mm-hmm. and how many devices you can buy over the course of a year if you give up smoking, yeah. right? So, you know, there, there's, there are people who are going to get involved with vaping and they're going to get more involved with vaping. It's going to become a hobby for them. Yeah. It's going to become a passion for them. But there's also people out there who just don't want to smoke. Yeah. Right? And, and, and I think that maybe sometimes the image that we get from the hobbyists might be deterrent for smokers as well, too. Don't. Because this does turn into a hobby, as you can tell, you know, <laughs> just looking behind me. But this does turn into a hobby for a lot of people. And just because it turns into a hobby, it shouldn't turn you off from Jesus uh, mod or whatever. We're not. <laughs> we're not that. Uh, we are just people that quit smoking. And some people have taken it to a different level. And it's actually that hobby that's keeping them off cigarettes. So right. we shouldn't look down to it. But it shouldn't also deter for you from joining this this wonderful community. Because there's a lot of good people in this community right. as well, too. And and we, we probably should touch on that, like, real quick, okay? Yeah. So, you know, when you look at vaping, uh, what do you see, Right. When you pick up a, a, a vape publication or you go to you look at, um, you know, YouTube videos or you go to a vape show. Mm-hmm. Right. You may see something that is a complete turnoff uh, for you. Yeah. Right. Now, let me tell you something. I've hung out with with, you know, a lot of different kinds of people, uh, people with tattoos covering their body, people with giant ear gauges, uh, you know, people that with the big beards and, and, you know, the hats and everything. And they are some of the nicest people I have ever met. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but regardless, some people are going to look at that. They're going to say, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Yeah. And you don't have to guys, 
You really, really don't have to. Because every time you see that, you have to understand that there's somebody else, somebody's grandmother, somebody's mother, somebody's sister or brother that are, are vaping, but you don't see that a lot, yeah. right? You don't see that because that's typically not the face of vaping. One of the greatest things that I've ever seen in my journey through vaping was actually here in Florida. I was at a vape shop. The door opened. A little old woman with a walker came in. She walked her way up to the counter. She bought her coils. She bought her e-liquid and she turned her walker around and she walked out. You know what? That at times really needs to be the face of vaping. That's what we need to see more of. Okay. Because she's never, probably never going to be in a vape publication. She's not going to be, um, you know, making YouTube videos. She's not going to be at a vape show, but you know what? She is every bit as much a vapor as we all are. Yeah. Uh, and keep it financially, just to, just to end the segment, financially, you are going to save money uh, via vaping. Unless you become a hobbyist, then you might not save a lot of money, but it doesn't make any difference because you save your health. But on average, on average, depending on where you are, because some of the states obviously have higher tobacco tax. If you're in New York, for example, you know, smoking two packs of cigarettes a day in New York probably costs you $700, $800 a month, right? You can vape with under $100 a month, no matter where you are. It doesn't make a difference. But that should be probably a budget between $80, right? Am I, am I right, Phil? Yeah, but but eighty bucks should be able to maintain you through through the entire month, even less if you start the you know making your own liquid and so that's something that you can explore in the into the future. But I but but let's not confuse too much. Let's just stop it right there. We'll take a few questions and then we'll stop the video as well too because we're at hour and a half already. Feel believe it or not. It, it feels like we just started talking, buddy. I know, I know, I know. It really it, it, it's once you start talking vaping. But uh, I just want to reiterate the the purpose of this. And, uh, and I've seen some comments about Super Chat and stuff like that. We're working on this. This is just the first episode. And I'm actually handing the mechanics of broadcasting onto Phil's uh, YouTube channel. So the episode will be up. The uh, uh, Hopefully, Phil will create a playlist into his YouTube where these episodes will go down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut every slide and video segment into smaller videos and have we those are. up as well. To, uh, uh, I'm we're going to do that. Eventually, we're going to do it. But okay. that's the easiest thing because if, some, <laughs> if you have a smoker that has a particular question, you don't want them to watch an hour and a half video. You can just send them and say, hey, you want to learn about resistance? Just go to this little piece right here, and this is a five-minute segment on resistance. And I think this is what it's going to be uh, moving forward. I think that's the idea, at least, of, of, yeah. of creating the Smoker Show. Right. But I think, you know, there, there is some information that, that we went through in this show that I think it's important that we go through in every show yeah, right yeah, yeah um absolutely. because you know like i keep saying somebody is going to try vaping for the very first time uh, and they're going to need to to hear this information over and over and over again and i think this is a good place to to have that kind of information um yeah yeah this, by the way how's florida treating you it's nice man i just yeah. i haven't shoveled any snow yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and I saw a question by Ray. Uh, can you link uh, your mom? Yeah, absolutely. We'll have it on Facebook. And just give her the link. She can click on it, and, and she can take a look at it. And um, we really want the vaping community to embrace this. I know it's boring. I know it's uh, probably stuff that you already know. But let me tell you something. Big Tobacco is coming. And if nobody else is going to do something about it, I guarantee you me and Phil are going to do something about it. We're close, and there's salt nicotines and everything. They're trying to dominate the market. Right. They're trying to come over and trust me, they're coming hard, fast and hard in the United States. If nobody else is willing to do it, we're going to step up and do it. We need to get more people vaping in 2018 if we want vaping to be around. The vape shops are going to be done in a couple of years once the big tobacco comes with full force. Believe me now. Hear me later. Who used to say that? All the time? Who was that comedian? I said now. believe me, <laughs> it was it was uh, it was on Saturday Night Live. Um, but anyway. Uh, but trust me when I tell you, they're coming and they're coming hard and it's up to us, the community, to be able to convert more people. So if we say that we have two and a half million, three million full-time users in the United States, that's what I'm estimating. I might be off by, by a few hundred thousand, but I'm going to say three, three million vapors in the United States, full-time vapors, with plenty of dual users. If you help one person, one person this year to convert, we've doubled our numbers. Where was six million, right? Then we become a more powerful force, not only on the voting block, but what the government is going to do to eliminate these vape shops and all these small businesses that have been sprung up by a consumer solution to the tobacco problem. I'm laughing because Buster wants to know how many people in the chat are wearing Skechers. <laughs> Probably only you. Hold on a second. Probably only you. Do you have Skechers on? Of course I do. 
Oh my, my god. Look at these are those are so Florida old people. These shoes. are my I swear they, they to are god. They're not. These are my That is so everybody relax. Shh. If Listen, that, if stop. this if this is an old people shoe type one in the chat, if it's not type two, if it's if it's old no, old no, person's no, chat type him. one, don't if listen to old, him. If it's a young people shoe type type two, do Let's not see, do not listen to him. Okay, <laughs> you know, I, hey, you know, maybe there's a lot of uh, uh, you know older folks that wear Skechers that smoke. True, so I want to true. Those I'm people. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. I, okay. If you smoke and you but, wear Skechers, I have nothing against it. Right, nothing these are it. my Skechers relaxed <laughs> fit air cooled memory foam. <laughs> Like all that, all yeah, that yeah. stuff going I'm, on in these these shoes right here. I'm, Listen, just because I, you don't, don't be jealous, just because my feet are happy and comfortable, and yours are not. I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of ones in the chat, so it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know, the same way, the same way you you shouldn't be intimidated by the vape product that you're using. You using you should not be intimidated by the the shoes I'm, that you're no, wearing. No, but but it's something <laughs> something I can bust your balls with, and 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 and, and if, hopefully it will turn into your pink, like pink is to me. <laughs> Sketches will be to you. That is the goal of the Sketchers ball busting, by the way. So. Yeah, By the way, yeah. the, um, uh, I, uh, I, my my uh, OCD or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, you have spaces in your sound panels behind you. I? I, I, there's, there's noticeable gaps in the sound panels. Oh, I'm sorry. Behind. I'll fix it for the next show. Can you, Make can sure you, you work do. on that? Because yes. my sound panels, even though I'm still echoey and I, I need to work on that, because I put a video up and like naturally nobody really looks at you know the information in the video. They're all just like, yeah. you know, hey, you're very echoey, Phil, and you need to fix that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm working on it, guys. <laughs> I really yeah. yeah. But I have beautiful sound panels. There's no spaces. There's no gaps yeah. at all. Well, no. I'm, I'm glad that you're settling in down there in Florida. Hopefully, I'll be able to come in the next couple of weeks and visit you, and we can hang out. And um, yeah, that's what we had for the uh, for the uh, first uh, episode of the Smoker Show. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like button and yeah. share it. Please just send it to a smoker. Say, hey, take a look at this uh, this uh, little episode that we uh, we talk about vaping, debunking some myths. We're gonna have a lot more of that in the future. Try to keep it a little bit shorter as well, too. This was the first episode. Try to keep it a little bit more organized. And hopefully, we'll have the phone lines working by, by the next episode. I, am, I will be working on that as well, too. I, I think my computer I, updated and it screwed up. I thought we were extremely organized. I thought that went much better uh, for the first show than I expected it to yeah. go, actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, I did my best. Uh, the, 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 the update on the computer screwed up something with my sound card, I think. That's what happened. Okay. So we will have the, uh, we'll have the call-in number. Um, you know, uh, I guess if there's any last minute questions in the chat, we can go ahead and attack those uh, for a couple of minutes and then we're going to wrap this one up. But I do uh, I appreciate everybody who came to the show tonight uh, to watch. Uh, I hope, you know, like I say in the videos, I hope uh, some of the information was valuable to you guys. Yeah. But remember, just remember that, uh, you know, th this show is not a show for you. Yeah. Uh, this show is going to be a lot of review. It's going to be a lot of really, really basic, simple stuff. Uh, you know, we may take on, you know, some more, you know, hot topics or, or some more technical topics in the future. But uh, this is really a show that that I hope uh, people support and I hope people send smokers to. Yeah. Right? Uh, just support. to answer a couple of questions, I got asked if I'm using cotton. No, I do not use cotton. I do have a sensitivity and I use this, which is like a cellular cotton. I use Fiber Freaks. Um, this is original strips, and this is just a little bit. That's what I use for when I build my atomizers, just to answer that question. Uh, we're going to try to go bi-weekly, at least for the start. Maybe we'll turn yeah. it into a monthly show, but we're going to try to do the show every Tuesday night, every two weeks. So we'll have two episodes of Smoke Free Radio uh, and then two episodes of The Smoker Show all in the, uh, under that same umbrella. I think this is this is the best way to handle it. That will give me a little bit, of, uh, you know, a break as well too b between everything else that, that's going on. And I'll try to pop up smoke free radio episodes if something uh, really really important comes along, just like I did before. If I have something yeah. that's pre-recorded. Hey, uh, Buster, Buster, do me a favor and let me know what those uh, those two smokers that you have uh, with you, what their names are. I want to say hello to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, it wouldn't be great if Skechers did sponsor the show. Can we reach well, out to them? I guarantee you, we do more advertising for Skechers than we do any vape. I know, company. <laughs> I know. We really should reach out to them. You know what would be really cool to everybody that's listening? Send e uh, an email to Skechers. <laughs> would you do that for us? Say so these guys I, are here promoting the hell out of you. You should sponsor the show. You should, I, I can, that would I be can, really fun, wouldn't it be fun? I can I can see the cease and desist letter already. I know, right? <laughs> no, I mean, they, 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 they probably haven't heard sketches this much, and uh, why would they anyway? I mean, mm -hmm. except if it's an ARP meeting, but uh, that's just not here or there. But um, uh, what I'm saying is that if you guys 
really want to help in 2018 vaping to remain the way it is, help convert a smoker. That's all it is. Period. What else can you Andy, say? Andy, um, I'm saying hello specifically to Andy and Randall. Okay. Uh, Andy and Randall are, are watching. They're smokers. They're watching with Buster. Uh, I hope some of this information, like we said, is valuable. We're going to have these, uh, these slides uh, available to you guys. And um, it's a better lifestyle, man. I'm telling you, you're, you're, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel better. And I just want to, uh, just to remind you, we're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We are uh, on Twitter. <clears throat> we're on Instagram. We're everywhere. Just send us a message or email us. And we'll be more than happy to guide you into your journey. Thank you guys for watching. We certainly appreciate it. Thanks to all the vapors that came out. And um, and thanks to all of you that actually recommended this show to a smoker. You yeah, might awesome. change somebody's life. And there's nothing more powerful. No financial gain can be as more satisfying as helping somebody uh, save their life. So thank you very much for hanging out. And uh, you want to close it off, Phil? No, that's it. Um, you know, what Dimitri just said. One of the best uh, experiences that I ever could hope for going to a show is when somebody comes up to me and says, hey, you know, it's because of you with your assistance, uh, I quit smoking. And I always say the same thing, you know, give yourself all the credit because I don't have any way to reach through you, YouTube and knock the cigarette out of your hand. Right. But t for me to have been part of your journey, that that, that is an honor for me. And if you go to uh, tasterjuice.com, there is a success stories page there. And, you know, never mind all the cool mods and the cool tanks and the cool stuff. Um, the success stories page is what means most to, the, the most to me. I mean, those are my trophies in vaping, right? If I, if I can help people through what I do, not smoke anymore, if I can maybe extend a life here or there, I mean, wow, what an honor and what a privilege that is. And close it off with your signature move, buddy. Thanks for watching.